Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. I would rather have a mind opened by wonder than one closed by belief. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you may be in this magical, magnanimous, magnificent, majestic, marvelous, metaphysical, miraculous, mind-awakening, mind-bloggling, and mind-blowing planet of ours. This is Inspired Living Radio. I am your host, Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, here with you yet again for another what I like to call soul adventure and a very inspiring episode to explore, discuss, and discover the many diamonds with each and every one of us and the many diamonds in our world that have yet to be revealed as I take us to a galaxy far, far away, or perhaps may not as as far as we think it is. So, get comfortable. Grab your favorite drink, kick back, sit back, or lie back. Take in a nice, deep, healing, peaceful, and cleansing breath. (sighs) Ah. And let us prospect prospect together as we discuss today's show topic, uh, which is something that I've done a few podcasts on over the uh, last eight seasons of Inspired Living. And we're going to be talking about UFOs, UAPs, extra dimensional beings, ETs, what some call aliens. There's something coming. And are we ready as a world, as a planet, to really finally take these seriously? And we're going to get into a conversation about that uh, on this episode. I've done a lot of research. I've had my own experience. And I'm going to share some different perspectives because what I love to do and remind people here on Inspired Living is we're a smorgasbord. We're a buffet. We offer different perspectives, and you pick and choose what you want to take from that buffet, what you want to you know, choose from that smorgasbord of knowledge and wisdom and information. Some like the broccoli, some like the uh, cauliflower, some like the cream corn, some like the uh, bread pudding. <laughs> I don't know. It's just we try to offer perspective. doesn't mean you know that I'm right, I'm wrong, but it's, it's here to inspire you, to get you to think outside the box, to encourage, to motivate, uh, maybe make a change in your life. So I uh, want to just say thank you uh, as we dare to a dream, dare to explore, dare to live and discover that diamond within. I always want to always give a big shout out and thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to all the followers of my work and of course to all of you inspired listeners out there from around the globe, the universe and beyond. My team and I here at Inspired Living Radio work uh, very hard to bring uh, positive inspirational content to the airwaves and we're just very humbled and grateful Uh, For you, not just for listening, whether it's today's live show or if you're downloading on your favorite podcasting platform, subscribing to the work, uh, to the YouTube channel, leaving reviews, but you've made Inspired Living Radio and podcasts um, a top-ranked inspirational podcast to follow and listen to for the last three years running. And we just want to say thank you. We do appreciate it, and we appreciate you. So if you've not yet subscribed, liked, or followed the show, there's always time to do so over on our main social media platforms and run the 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 big three, I guess you could say, uh, maybe big four. Facebook, which is under the group community page, Inspired Living Radio and Podcasts. We're also over on Instagram and Twitter, which I now guess goes by the letter X. And you can look for us under the name Inspired for us. That's the number four. So Inspired for us. And of course, over on our YouTube channel, Inspired Living Radio, Um And we're now streaming through Audible and your favorite podcasting platforms. We're on all of them, so you can find Inspired Living. Just look for my... uh my ugly mug picture out there, and you'll 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 see me, and that's the show. And you can also say, Alexa, open up Inspired Living Podcast to play the less, latest episode. So we like to say you are the inspired in the inspiration. So let's get inspired. Let's be inspired. Let's inspire others. And let's inspire before we expire. Are you ready to go prospecting in a galaxy far, far away, or maybe not so much? Let's go do that. So today... 
Um, I had the opportunity. We have amazing guests uh, coming up here on Inspired Living uh, now from now and through. I think we're scheduled out to um, maybe November now. And so we've had amazing guests the last uh, few episodes uh, talking different topics, uh, inspirational topics. I'm always just amazed and humbled and um, inspired when I have these guests on to talk uh, about their different journeys, their different soul adventures. And today we had an open window where I could talk about something that is uh, very personal to me, something that I've experienced myself. And I always remind people, until you've actually had a situation happen to you, it's really hard to relate. And in and, and today's topic, we're talking about something's coming. Is the world, are humans ready for a serious discussion on UFOs, UAPs, Extra dimensional beings, ETs, aliens, uh, the list goes on and on and on. And it's one of the oldest, longest conspiracy theories. Think about that. One of the oldest, longest conspiracy theories running in recorded history and in mankind. And that's the question are we alone in the universe? Now, we've done, like I said, we, in, the, in, uh, in the past, we've done several episodes. We've had. Uh, uh, we had a director on last season uh, that uh, is now streaming on Apple TV called The Terror in the Sky, where they actually uh, were able to witness a UFO coming out of a portal off the coast of California um, by the Catalina Islands. We've talked about uh, Kubriak's monolith. If you ever saw the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, that was his approach to how artificial intelligence or higher intelligence would interact with us as a species. Uh, we've done uh, the report last year that came out in June, uh, of the UAP report. So we've done several podcasts and episodes on this topic, and it wasn't something I really felt comfortable talking about until about late 2017, uh, 2018. And like I said, I'd rather have my mind opened by wonder than one closed by belief, and it was not until oh, it was about 1999 uh, that I was serving in the U.S. Coast Guard, and I've, you've heard me talk about this in previous uh, episodes, uh, on the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Spencer off the coast of Puerto Rico, which is the tip of the Bermuda Triangle. And I had always been aware, I was always fascinated by sci-fi. You know, I always, you know, I always think of uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind that came out in 76. Uh, went back and rewatched 2001 A Space Odyssey because now I had a different uh, awareness to what the actual movie was really all about. And it was not until 1999 that I had my own personal experience. Now, I'd had a previous experience when I was a little kid, uh, but that was more of like watching a satellite up in the sky. The only difference is this satellite was zipping around. And if I'm a little kid, we're talking late 70s here, right? So the technology for our satellites wouldn't have the capability to do that. So, you know, I was with my... Uh, my dad and my stepmom, and and uh, we saw something. We're driving, and we pulled over to the side of the road and looked up and just watched this thing zipping around. But it, it looked to be like a satellite. You know, it just had that same uh, lighting effect, but it was just moving. It was zipping and really didn't think much about it. So it wasn't until 1999 that I had my 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 close encounter of Mark's kind is how I refer to it. And I had just gotten off watch, and uh, uh, I was on the watch uh, middle of the morning, so it was about 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, coming out of the engine room, went up to the bridge to have usually debrief and, and talk and, and you know just kind of hang out until the next shift takes over, and then we hit the rack for a couple hours. And it was on the bridge that we actually had a ping on our radar. There was something off our starboard bow, and when I went out uh, to the, the bridge to watch to see what was going on, uh, I just, for, you know, a matter of moments, a matter of minutes, I would say it's hard. It, you know, I go back and kind of reflect on this. It's almost like time stood still or time was irrelevant. And uh, we watched these lights dancing in the middle of nowhere, completely dark. Uh, our ship didn't have any running lights, so you, you could try to debunk and say, is it a you know, glare off the water from our lights? Because we were looking for, of all things, we were looking for uh, go-fast boats and illegal drugs. It was the big, you know, war on drugs at that time in 1999. And so we were running what's called dark and ship. So all of our portholes were closed. We were not giving off any light because we were looking for drug smugglers. So... Right there, my mind was like, well, it's not light coming from our vessel, but, you know, about a football field length off the starboard bow, we watched these lights, green and orange and red and blue, these orbs, and they would zip and they would move. It was almost like watching a, a dance of light, very similar to what Spielberg captured in, uh, you know, Close Encounters of the Third Kind in 76 with those lights that were orange and would zip about. After about what I would estimate to be 10 to 15 minutes, these balls of light came into one big ball. They almost like merged together and then shot down into the water. And so 
it was logged in the logbook. Uh, we had, you know, we had all seen it, but nobody ever really talked about it afterwards. It kind of just went away after the next morning. Uh, nobody was really talking about it. Nothing was really said. Um, I'm sure the captain saw it because the officer of the watch had to be, you know, notified. And I'm sure the captain read the logbook. But it was a very interesting experience for me because as I watched these lights, I felt like they were watching me. I felt like there was an intelligence in an interaction, almost like a telepathic communication. And that's the first time I'd ever had that experience. And until you actually have an experience, it's really hard to relate. You know, of course, people will, you know, make fun of you and put on your tinfoil hat, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on and on and on. And I didn't really start talking about this publicly until 2017, 2018, when I started preparing us for what was going to be the Roaring Twenties and these. I don't call them meditations, premonitions, dreams of we are going to realize in our roaring 20s of this decade that we are scientifically and proven not to be alone in the universe. So this episode is going to be dedicated to a discussion uh, on some different perspectives. So again, just think uh, you're going to the buffet and you're going to load up on your your plate what you like and then pass on the things that you don't. So I'm going to cover it from a uh, um, my experience, my personal experience, I'm going to cover it from what we call the Fermi Paradox. We're going to talk about uh, aliens and angels uh, from a spiritual, uh, religious standpoint. We're also going to talk about what's currently been coming out, because there's a lot of information that has been coming out at the highest levels of our government, and we want to talk about that. So with that, let me get a, just a quick sip of water, because I'm going to be talking for most of the hour. A lot of times when I have guests, they can do all the talking, but this hour is dedicated solely to uh, this topic. And I'm going to start off with this uh, because, like I said, I've, I've talked to several different people. I've had many people on the show, and it really comes down to not believing in aliens or ETs or extra-dimensional beings. It's like taking a spoonful of water from the ocean and saying there are no whales and sharks in the ocean because there are none in my spoon. That's how big our universe is. The universe is mathematically almost uncomprehensible. You know, what they thought was the, uh, the age of the universe has now been debunked by the James Webb Telescope. I believe they thought it was 8 billion years, and they're now thinking 13 billion. I don't have those exact numbers, but we were way off on our calculations about how old the universe really is. And when you think about how large the universe is— and we'll get into the Fermi paradox and what that means for those of you that are maybe just starting to get into ufology, or maybe you've had an experience, maybe you've seen something. But we're going to talk about the Fermi paradox because it's like it's such a big area out there. Then why are we the only ones? Are are we the only ones? So I always say, you know, for episodes like this, uh, stay weird. We are weird, and what I mean by being weird is we're widely enlightened individuals recreating recreating dreams, but also preparing for what many of us call first contact, the age of disclosure. Something is coming, and we're being prepared for that. The question is, are we ready to accept that we are not alone in the universe? Now, today's polls you know, would, would measure that about 70% of the population— uh, now, I can't speak for the world population, but I can just based on the polls I've seen just within the United States and uh, Canada and Mexico, this part of the world, 70% of the population believes that there is something, whether it's coming from an external standpoint, coming from outer space, which is a very large area, or something that has been here the entire time based in uh, somewhere down on the earth, somewhere down in the ocean. Uh, we've done even an episode on the secrets of Antarctica that are going to start to come out over this next 20 years. And Antarctica will hold a lot of information because there's not a lot of people down there, right? But yet we're racing to create uh, icebreaking fleets. Both China, Russia, and the United States are on this mad race to get as many icebreakers built and down there to start, you know, not just for resources, but there's a lot of stuff that's going to start to come out. As I always say, wait, watch, and witness when you're hearing the episode today in 2023. Could be another year down the road or another two or three years down the road, and that's okay. But at least we're having the conversation and the awareness because awareness brings is the greatest agent for change. So just to tell you how big, you know, like I said, just because we don't capture the whale and shark in our spoon doesn't mean that they're not out here. And, and this is how big the universe is. So I'm going I'm to start with a little bit of physics here. If you leave the Earth at the age of 15 and you go into, let's say, the aliens and the extra dimensionals come down and they beam us up and we go into their spaceship and we travel at the speed of light and we spend five years traveling in space 
on their spaceship at the speed of light, when we get back to Earth, we will have been aged by 20 years old. So we will be 20 years old, and all of our friends... Now, again, we left at 15. We've been traveling for five years. We come back at the age of 20, and all of our friends and all of our family that we left at whatever age that they were, when I was 15 or when you were 15, when you left, they would be 65 years old. So this phenomenon is known as time dilation in physics. And it just shows you how big the universe is. And if the universe is that big based on time dilation, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity, that's how big the universe is, then how would these, you know, these beings that are, you know, most likely more, definitely more advanced and much older in the universe, how would they be able to travel across such vast distances? Now, I go back to Nikola Tesla, who back in 1899, uh, we refer to Nikola Tesla as the father of frequency, because without him, we wouldn't have a lot of our modern technology as we know it today, uh, including the iPhone. He actually, in, you know, in 18. 18- 90s, he was talking about a little black box where people could talk to each other around the planet, and people, you know, persecuted him and called him many different names uh, for his beliefs. But again, I'd rather have my mind open to wonder than closed by that of belief at the time. So he he believed, uh, he firmly believed that it was absurd to think that we're the only intelligent beings in this very, very large universe. And this is all the way back in 1899, so this is before the turn of the century. And while he was testing a transmitter to track storms, Tesla had received some sort of transmission from an unknown source. Uh, Now, from his perspective, he was sure it was extraterrestrial signal coming from somewhere within our solar system, uh, possibly even coming from Mars. So, you know, it's always been, I've always been fascinated what, what happened with that information, what's, what's hidden behind this strange discovery, uh, even at the turn of the century when we started to, if you think about it, start working with radio, uh, McConey, uh, Nikola Tesla started to work with radio signatures and transmitting frequencies. And so it's, it's a very fascinating um, historical perspective. Now, one of the quotes that's uh, really been in my awareness for some time, and this comes from, you know, they always say go to the subject matter experts when it comes to this. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. Do a little bit of prospecting. As and as the intuitive prospector, I read a book um, called The Way of the Explorer, and it was a, an Apollo astronaut's journey through the material and the mystical worlds, and his name is Edgar D. Mitchell. He's actually an Apollo um, astronaut who is, you know, un, you know, since then passed into spirit. But this is what he said, based on what was in the book, The Way of the Explorer, quote, yes, there have been ET visitations. There have been crash craft. There have been material and bodies recovered. There's been a certain amount of reverse engineering that has allowed some of these craft or some components to be duplicated. And there is some group of people that may or may not be associated with the government at this point that I have this knowledge. They have been attempting to conceal this knowledge and people in the high level of government have very little, if any, valid information about this. It has been the subject of disinformation in order to deflect attention and create confusion so the truth doesn't come out, end quote. And that's by an Apollo astronaut who went into space, a sub- who I would classify as a subject matter expert. So that's Edgar Mitchell, and that's a quote from... Uh, the book, The Way of the Explorer. So if you are, you know, into book reading, I highly recommend that. Uh, There's a lot of great books out there. But as far as, let's just chat uh, about what's coming and talk about what's been in the news recently and just kind of go through a perspective of some of the research that I've done based, again, off my own experience. So let's start with this. Let's start with getting on the same page about what we're talking about when we're talking about aliens. Now, a true definition of alien is, quote, anything that belongs to a foreign territory, end quote. Someone who is not a citizen of a country they reside in would be considered a, quote, unquote, alien. In the plant and animal world, alien species um, to a region are often called, quote, invasive species, end quote, And if we're talking about aliens to Earth, an alien could refer to any being that is not from Earth. Now, 
there's a difference because when we're talking about aliens, spiritual beings like angels and demons, which has a long history based on the top ten, and I'm not I'm not calling out any one religion. I was raised in Catholicism and Christianity here in the Western part of the world, but I have studied the top ten religions from around the world, and there is a correlation where they talk about the spiritual beings. They do talk about the uh, the, the angels, the the devils, the demons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we want to clarify, or at least I want to clarify, the difference between that and the spiritual uh, beings that do exist. And they do interact with our world and, you know, could be included in that group. But Scripture, uh, if we go back to, if we're, if we're to trust every word in Scripture, one of the, you know, many books, uh, Hindu Book of the Dead, um, the Egyptian Bible, the Hindu Bible, the Quran, the, the, the Bible of uh, Christianity— if you want to call angels and demons aliens because they're foreign to Earth, then sure, I guess there are technically aliens in the ancient history of our religious writings uh, or the Bible. Um, you know, you may want to know, maybe you do know the teachings of the Bible. I know I've, I've read through it, and I've, you know, prospect to learn different religions from around the world but based on different parts of the world. But anything about life on other planets is always not been referred in from what I've found in Scripture. So our working definition of aliens will not include in this podcast angels or demons since they are spiritual beings and not or organisms, not organic, incarnated, physical beings. So again, our working definition of alien is any extraterrestrial life form foreign to Earth. Now, I say foreign to Earth, meaning they, they came. Some would argue that we didn't come from this planet, that we are aliens ourselves. Uh, that's, a, that's a debate that has been raging for many, many years. But if maybe they are part of the Earth, we just haven't discovered that, right? This Earth is very big. We've only discovered about 7% of our oceans, uh, and we don't have the technology to go deep within the core of the Earth. So there's a lot of places that could be up for uh, conversation, debate, and perspective. So, but again, for today's podcast, I'm just talking about the definition of alien as any extra, extraterrestrial life form foreign to Earth. So starting there, the Bible doesn't have really anything to say about that. I haven't found a lot of references in um, religious writings, um, but there is the potential for organisms to exist somewhere else in the universe besides planet Earth. And again, the Bible doesn't definitively say anything about that either. So some of you listening to today's show are aliens demons. So, you know, there's always going to be that perspective. But given that the definition of alien refers to any foreign being, uh, I think that there's room for the term being used to describe a demonic being. But in Scripture, demonic beings are spiritual beings. They are not part, um, they are part of the spiritual realm, not another planet. So see where I'm trying to carve out the difference of aliens, extra dimensional beings come from a different planet, a different part of the universe, where if we start having a conversation about aliens and demons, that's more of a spiritual being, and they're actually a part of our world, the blending of what is seen and what is unseen, uh, also called the etheric world. And the spiritual world, the spiritual realm does interact with the world throughout different uh, religious writings and scripture. So for example, if Ephesians 6.12 talks about the enemy that is not the flesh and blood, but that includes, quote, rulers, authorities, powers, and forces of evil in the heavenly realms, right? Whatever the hel heavenly realms are. Some like to theorize that heaven is up and hell is down, but from my perspective, we're on a round planet, so there really is no up or down, metaphysically speaking. Uh, it's just based on belief, right? Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, uh, 4 and 5 talks about the fighting a spiritual enemy with the weapons of this world, and that's, quote, of this world. In Matthew chapter 4, the tempter meets Jesus in the wilderness. So whether they are considered aliens, quote-unquote aliens, or not, Demons are spiritual beings that sided with, you know, historically um, is talked about, sided with Satan as an enemy of God, and they lost their place in heaven, which is quoted as saying, lost their place in heaven. So Scripture says that they were hurled to the earth, Revelations 12, 7 through 9, where they engage with humanity and attempt to keep people from salvation. If you follow the religious doctrine, if you follow that, and again, this is a, this is a uh, buffet, you pick and choose. Um, not everybody listening to the show is religious and or spiritual. You may be actually atheist or agnostic, and that's fine. We welcome you. Uh, but in most biblical references to demons, people are possessed or filled with a demonic spirit. So we could 
so someone could technically have a demonic experience and that's not determined as alien necessary, but you have to put that into the conversation. So I'll say, sure. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a possibility. So now we're going to give a different perspective. Are angels aliens? And uh, there's, uh, we're going to go to our first break here in just a sec, but I had, had, when I was doing my research for this show, I actually found an interesting picture that showed an, an angel category and an aliens category. And it was interesting because in the one category for the angels category, it says, not from here. Aliens, not from here. Angels, more intelligent than humans. Aliens, more intelligent than humans. Aliens, they can fly. Angels, they can also fly. Angels have been noted to have in possession of powerful weapons. Same with aliens, also possesses powerful weapons that we don't understand. It's also said that angels can communicate telepathically. Same with aliens, can communicate telepathically. Angels from history past may have had something to do with humanity's creation and or development. Same thing could be said and argued with that of aliens. And first and last, angels visit Earth from time to time. Aliens visit Earth from time to time. So that's a perspective of the, the similarities between angels and aliens. And when we come back from our first, our one and only break, uh, we're going to talk about our angels, uh, aliens. We're going to talk about the Fermi paradox, and then we're going to get into uh, some things that are uh, happening right now as we speak in our government at the highest levels. So stick around. Don't travel too far to a galaxy far, far away. We'll be back here in a few moments. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. One planet, 7.3 billion people. Only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having a hard time, time landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I, I am, am hunger, hunger in, in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. And welcome back to Inspired Living as we prospect on this Wisdom Wednesday to go deeper, to discuss, debate, 
examine the latest news, the perspective and updates in the field of ufology, space travel, and our search for extraterrestrial life and higher dimensional beings. Is it fact? Is it fallacy? Is it fantasy? What's the next evolution for the human race, our planet, space spores, space travel, society, religion, and or technology? Uh, you know, it's what the uh, philosophy of what NASA's third science question is, are we alone? And that's what we're talking about today as we prospect deeper with all the information that's been coming out, the recent information that has gone up to the highest levels of the uh, U.S. government, including whistleblower protections, uh, experts that have now testified in an open forum um, uh, to say that we definitely have extraterrestrial craft and that we've recovered non-human uh, uh, entities from these craft. Uh, so that was just uh, last week or the week before. And so I'm following up as a podcast because we've done a couple of shows in the past to talk about these type of topics with both myself and some amazing guests along the way that have come on to the show to share that. So something is coming. Uh, you know, is, is the world ready for, uh, you know, the seriousness of one of the longest, oldest conspiracy theories in recorded history, are we alone? Are we the only species on this planet? Are we the only species in this universe? I hope not, because that seems like a, a lot of waste, a lot of wasted space, right? So uh, for our listeners out there, I do want to just give you one update before we jump into the second part of the show. I want to let you know that I have a new book out. Uh, I have co-authored my first book. It is called Between Worlds, Reflections. And it is a true account of my experiences that I've had, mostly focused on the psychic side of the house, not so much the mediumship side of the house. Uh, but it's you know it's something that people have been fascinated with the the psychic phenomenon. I like to re refer to it as both phenomenon and science for centuries. Uh, but what it truly means to be psychic. So the book is uh, a best-selling book on uh, Amazon right now under a few categories: metaphysics, angels, uh, spirituality. But it's called. Uh, between Worlds, Reflections, and it's my first published book. So if you want to check that out, you can also go to markleanhart.com where I have an online store now. You can click on that uh, to get your latest copy. But it, it's, it's about how these abilities that I've come into over the last 15 years, because I didn't always have this gift. I write about my experiences through trauma and tragedy, including my UFO experience that I had when I was in the Coast Guard, that, you know, how it impacts my life and how to work with these gifts and abilities and the truth about being psychic and what it's like to live simultaneously uh, between two worlds, uh, both the physical world and the spiritual realms. Uh, it can be exhilarating uh, and overwhelming, but at the same time, like standing on the edge of a vast ocean, feeling the excitement and awe of its power and depth, it can be very complex and take you to different uh, different parts of your journey. But it's uh, Between Worlds Reflections, and that is available now as my first published book, so I'm really excited to share that news with you. So there's my plug for my book, and let's get back to the second half of the show, because I, I have a lot of notes and, and things to share with you uh, on this, what I, I think is a very exciting, inspiring um, podcast because of my own experiences, but what I see happening now in the physical world at the very highest levels of our government. So before the break, we were examining the difference of our perspectives of aliens, angels, demons, that being of aliens being extra dimensional beings or physical organic beings that come from another place versus angels and demons. It is more of a spiritual nature that are more here that, that interact with our, our planet. So are angels aliens? Some would argue yes. Others would say heck no. And that's going to be an argument that I'm sure that we will never agree on, so we always say we can agree to disagree. So that's something we can agree on. So as with demons, angels are foreign beings to the earth, so there, there is some room for the term, quote, alien to be used to describe them. But there are many bi biblical references to angels appearing like humans and interacting with humans on earth, but they don't seem to stay on earth for long periods of time. That's another interesting thing about angels. They come and go. So angels certainly could also be mistaken for extra, dim extra dimensional beings or aliens. It could even be mistaken for a human being. Or as the writer of the Hebrew states, do not, quote, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing some by for by doing so. Some people have shown hospitalities to angels without knowing it, end quote. And that's from Hebrews, Hebrews 13, chapter 2, if you know your scripture. 
Uh, angels are often um, interacting with humans throughout the Old and the New Testament. If you if you follow Scripture, and again, you may not, but these are just from some examples to uh, bring clarity and awareness to this conversation that we're having today. Uh, Genesis 18, Abraham encounters three strangers that he does not realize are angels. Numbers, uh, verse 22, Balaam and his donkey encounter an angel in the road. Joshua 5, Joshua encounters the, quote, commander of the army of the Lord, end quote, uh, 2 Kings, verse 6, Eliza and the army of angels. And if you go into Matthew and Luke's gospel accounts in the New Testament, <clears throat> Zechariah, Mary, and Joseph all have encounters with angels. So Luke uh, chapter 2 says, a, quote, a host of angels engage him with a group of shepherds. So, you know, all angels are ministering servants to, sent to serve those who will inherit salvation, according to the book of uh, the chapter of Hebrews, verse 1. Uh, chapter 14, they are distinctly separate and in service and submission to that of God that ensures that God is ultimately accomplishing His mission. So there's a lot of references. Again, I can I could go on and on. Psalm 91 that talks about uh, they will guard God's people in all ways. Um, Psalm 34, they encamp around those who fear God and deliver them. Luke 15, they rejoice when sinners repent. Exodus 23, verse 20, they are prepared in the way of Israel to enter the promised land. So there's a lot of scripture reference, even in the book of Genesis, if you go to the original Hebrew translation before it was translated, it says that they were created, we were created in their image. It was plural, their, not his image. That was later changed. So I've always been fascinated with, with wordsmithing and word change because their image and his image are completely two different things. But again, do your own research, do your own prospecting like I have. I'm just sharing this perspective with you today. So could someone have an angel experience and determine that it was an alien? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Hebrews 13 even indicates that angels have engaged humanity without humanity even knowing. So that's that's always been an interesting. So when it comes to religious perspectives, because NASA did last year when this report came out, the first report on UAPs and UFOs, which if you've never heard the term UAP, that stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. That is the government's Pentagon's version of what we've been calling UFOs for over 70 years since the Roswell crash. So, in fact, the term flying saucers comes out of Washington State from a pilot who saw nine silver discs hovering around uh, Mount, Mount Rainier shortly after um, the Roswell crash and actually went over his mic, his uh, FCC communications to say, hey, I'm seeing nine silver discs floating around Mount Rainier here. Um, and these floating discs look like flying saucers. That's where the term actually comes from. So that's literally, I can look out my window of my studio and see Mount Rainier. So it's literally right in my backyard. Uh, but what happened is NASA brought all these theologians together from different religions uh, to have a committee to talk about, is the world ready? Now, I haven't seen that report. I, I track FOIA requests pretty uh, closely, Freedom of Information Act. I haven't seen any reports on that, but they did you know, bring 24 top theologians together to philosophize and debate and have a panel about what happens if, it, well, let's say the James Webb Telescope, just out of the blue, picks up an alien civilization that can measure its technology or its biosignatures, and we can actually see. We may not be able to travel to them, but the James Webb could tell us literally overnight, we could wake up tomorrow and find out that we're not alone based on actual scientific data that supports that argument. So if someone proved the existence of alien life in the universe, it, it would not negate any of the truth of Scripture, I, I don't think. People... As this comes to light, there's going to be people that believe in extra-dimensional beings, ETs. There's going to be people that classify them as demons based on writing. Uh, others will classify them as angels. Others will classify them as deities. You know, that's just the human experience, and we all have different opinions. They always say opinions are like eyebrows and elbows, and almost everybody has a pair. <laughs> so, um, But I don't think the way that Scripture is written, I, I don't think there's a conflict in the Bible with the potential for life outside of Earth, uh, from my own personal uh, research and my own personal experience. You know, Scripture claims that God created both the heavens and the earth, and all people are created in the image of God, whatever or whoever God is for you. Um, but the Bible, you know, is influenced based on, you know, past experiences, and it, and all that is still true science if we find extraterrestrial life. I don't think that changes the, the historical aspect. You know, we, we were created with the ability to wonder, like I said, I opened the show, I'd rather have a mind open by wonder than a uh, mind closed by belief. 
And in many ways, I think that this is a beautiful gift because it, it, it really challenges us as a species to explore and ponder the depths of what God is, who God is, with this creation that uh, has been created, what we call Earth. And when we look at the night sky filled with stars, the, 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 just the, the, the awe and wonder. All of us look up. Everybody looks up and wonders, are we alone? Uh, that, that awe and wonder will be on full display. And I think exploring the universe opens us up to a new picture of how great our, our God, whatever God is for you, uh, is if you know someday we do find life, and I think that we already have, it's just a matter of timing now, wait, watch, and witness, uh, even intelligent life, life that is far more advanced than us, um, somewhere other than Earth that doesn't diminish anything to do with Scripture. So, you know, throughout recorded history, human beings have claimed to make contact with supernatural powers from beyond this world. This is my. This includes myself, my own journey, the book that I, I wrote about, In Between Worlds, because I really had no aspirations or desire to, one, even be talking about this on a, a podcast radio show, uh, but to be doing spiritual work and to be writing about it as a published author now, uh, 20 years ago. That's not even where my mind was, but here we are today. In the Judeo-Christian and Islamic traditions, these beings are known as angels. Angels play an enormously important role in these traditions. So if you know your top 10 religions around the world and the books that are accompanied and the history accompanied with them, you'll know that um, specifically in the Judeo-Christian Islamic traditions that angels play a very big role in not only traditions, but to help create the first human being. Uh, you know, they're revealed in sacred scriptures that help found religions. Uh, they procreate, supposedly, a debate is they procreated with women. Uh, they transport prophets and seers, like Muhammad or Enoch, if you know your history and your writings, uh, through the heavens to receive secret wisdom. Uh, it's a whole other podcast about secret wisdom, sacred geometry, and, and the metaphysical world. And these angels become warriors in any kind of apocalyptic battle uh, to battle the fallen angels of Satan and his demons and helping to create the new earth. But what's interesting, since 1947, a new ex extraterrestrial power has appeared in literature, film, comics, and even religious scripture. Uh, think about, you know, the alien. Think about abductees, artists, religious visionaries claim that aliens perform all the same actions historically attributed to angels, except aliens today found religions, they transport humans to distant worlds, conduct genetic experiments, and in films such as Independence Day, they attempt to destroy human civilization in the White House. I don't think we're going down that road. I would I would hope that a species that's more advanced would uh, have not much uh, uh, not much weight in carrying violence. That that violence is a very uh, lower form of evolution. And I would imagine if they have this technology and they've worked through their technology and have mastered their technology and their aggression, that they would show up to finally give us the keys to the universe and the wisdom that's uh, right at our, our doorstep. So, you know, how do we make sense of these uncanny parallels, as we say, with these different, you know, um, stories and experiences and evidence? Um, it, it's really up to you and what you feel. I just know that, that we're not alone. So with that said, let's talk about the Fermi paradox. Is there some evidence suggesting that humans are are the galaxy's only intelligent species. So a gentleman by the name of Enrico Fermi thought so. And he was a pretty smart guy. You have to look him up. And Enrico Fermi, and it's called the Fermi Paradox. Fermi Paradox. And in 1950, he was a physicist. He just seemingly, you know, uh, made a lunchtime remark with his colleagues that, that caught and held the attention of SETI researchers for decades. And SETI is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, if you don't know what SETI is. So um, the utterance came while Fermi was discussing with his mealtime mates the, re the reasonable possibility that many sophisticated societies populate the galaxy, but somewhere between one sentence and the next, Fermi, Fermi's supple brain realized that if this was true, it implied something profound. If there are really a lot of alien societies, then some of them might have spread out. So Fermi grasped that any civilization with a modest amount of rocket technology and a, um, a modest amount of imperial incentive, incentives could rapidly colonize the entire galaxy. Think uh, the Empire in Star Wars, if you will. 
And within a few tens, within a few tens of millions of years, every star system could be brought under the wing of the quote unquote empire. Tens of millions of years may sound like a long project, but in fact, it's quite short compared to the age of our galaxy, which, like I said at the beginning, we thought the galaxy was a certain amount of age old. The, the James Webb Telescope has now rewritten those mathematical calculations, and it's really, the galaxy is roughly a thousand times more than what we thought. So what the Fermi Paradox really talks about is immediately recognize was that the aliens have had more t more than enough time to pepper the galaxy with their presence, but looking around, we don't see any clear indication that they're out and about. We don't see any obvious evidence ev evidence of any kind of galactic empire, no star destroyers, no Death Star. Um, we don't even see the United Federations of Planets, if I bring in the, uh, the Star Trek genre into this. Um, but what this prompted Fermi to ask, what was to him the obvious question? Quote, where is everybody? End quote. It's a, it, in a galaxy assumed to be filled with clever beings, why don't we see any? And this, dis, this dissonance is known as the Fermi paradox. So you'll have to look it up just for the sake of time. Uh, but what I want to uh, talk about is what's currently going on uh, for what's coming next. Uh, so for some time, uh, we've you know, been expressing interest in identifying flying objects, UFOs, also now called UAPs, and have deemed it mostly unacceptable in the wider society. But attitudes appear to be changing on latest polls in, in the government. Um, in fact, there's a, a UF, UFO lobbyist on, on uh, UF spacecraft that claims this thing is about ready to blow sky high. His name is Stephen Bissett. And he is um, an ex-intelligent officer that uh, says that disclosure is really, really close. So it's been a very few busy weeks if you've been following the news. He's a, he's a veteran UFO lobbyist. And uh, last month, uh, as an ex-U.S. intelligence officer who worked with the Department of Defense uh, UAP program task force, he went public with his claims. And that the federal government has recovered non-human spacecraft, transmedium material that can go from space through the air down into the ocean. And that the former official, David Grush, um, does claim of knowledge of this. Now, he doesn't say that he's actually seen it himself, but rather in an interview and a debrief, he said the accounts of the existence over the course of his work uh, with many news sources um, is, well, quote, we naturally, when you recover something that's either landed or crashed, sometimes you encounter dead pilots. And believe it or not, it's not as fantastic as it sounds. It's true. So last year was a breakthrough time for any kind of UFO um, or UAP uh, journey, especially for those that follow ufology. There was a landmark government report back in June that prompted the possibility of extraterrestrial visitors to finally be taken seriously by everyone from senators to a former president to the Pentagon to even uh, uh, superstars. Uh, like uh, athletes and, uh, you know, NBA superstars. So in June of last year, the Pentagon released a highly anticipated report on the unexplained aerial phenomenon. We did a show on that, if you want to go check that out. And it's now the preferred nomenclature by some in the extraterrestrial community, which found that there were more than 140 instances of UAPs that could not be explained. So they, they researched it. They looked at the uh, scientific method, the scientific proof, the data, and they could not explain what, would, what this is, which then falls in the category of UFO. So um, the report came out after it was leaked uh, through military footage in 2017. You can go back and look at this, uh, about these objects that would appear that would defy the laws of gravity, physics, uh, in the sky. And these were by pilots. These are uh, some of our highest... Um, smartest, most advanced pilots that we were seeing this in the sky, and, and, and after testimony from Navy pilots, uh, helped somewhat to um, destigmatize a subject that has long been, been defined, like I said, as conspiracy theory and dubious sightings, uh, some of the longest running in mankind. All in all, the new sincere approach to the UFOs has us longtime sky watchers very excited. Uh, even the former president, I'm not getting political here, but uh, even former President Obama was asked uh, about the issue recently of UFOs during an interview with CBS, and the former president confirmed, quote, end quote, footage and records of unidentified objects exist, end quote. He said, what is true, this is, I'm quoting him now, what is true is I'm actually being serious here. 
It is that there's footage and records of objects in the sky that we don't know what they are. We can't explain how they're moved and their trajectory, end quote. And this was via CBS News. Um, they have an easy, explainable pattern. And so you think, so I think that people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what this is, but I have nothing to report to you today. And that's from a former president. So you were talking the highest seat in the land, regardless of where your political, uh, you know, aspirations fall. This is just interesting that you have presidents, senators, a lot of key government people now talking about this. Now, even 60 Minutes uh, did a show on this. If 60 Minutes, uh, which has been around for a long time, my grandma watched 60 Minutes. So if 60 Minutes is doing a story, there is some validity and truth uh, to this. And it, it, it talks about, you know, the interview takes place in just in a, in a, in a summary. Um, much of the newfound and, and newly sincere interest in UFOs this week appears to stem from a report that the CBS 60 Minutes did on Sunday, which tackled, quote, the U.S. government's grudging acknowledgement of UFOs. So in, in this show, you can go check this out on 60 Minutes, they're talking to former experts, and uh, his, one of them is Lou Elizondo, uh, former Navy pilot Lieutenant Ryan Graves. Uh, Bill Whitaker's asking them, you know, to, for their, just their honesty and their, you know, and it's just interesting that they would respond because a lot of them did not want to go on camera and that and they weren't into this they weren't necessarily UFO people but the things that they saw that are out there is not only just a national security risk but it's it's defying the laws of gravity and aerodynamics they move at such velocity they move that um, in ways that our pilots you know Lou Alizado said this imagine a technology that can do a six to seven hundred g-force that can fly at 13,000 miles per hour, that can evade radar, and that can fly through air and water and possibly space. Oh, and oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control services, and yet can still defy the natural effects of Earth's gravities. This is precisely what we're seeing. So, you know, when you have this type of information and this data, and we now have whistleblower protection on a federal level where these experts are coming forward without the, the risk of losing their career or being, you know, um, labeled as a conspiracy theory and putting their tinfoil hat on. You have to really pay attention and sit up and say, okay, something's coming. Uh, and this is what we call full disclosure. So here it is. In conclusion, what's going on right now and has been going on, it's not about finding out what this phenomenon is. None of it is about finding out what this phenomenon is. They already know what it is. They've known for decades. It's about setting up the scaffolding for both the president and the government to formally confirm that extraterrestrial presence is real, they're here, and they exist. It's about setting up the disclosure event in a way that's conducive and positive and also has good public relations for our planet. Once they get the witnesses to testify, which would almost certainly include uh, the people I've talked about uh, that, that were featured in 60 Minutes, uh, you know, to, which some of them have testified in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee as of last week, um, once we have that technology in our hands, which means Roswell was real, um, it, this is going to you know, take off pretty quick of what's coming next for full disclosure. From the day the hearings start, because here's the situation. The hearings are going to probably be the most watched hearings in history. So hundreds of millions of people are watching this testimony unfold. They're watching these questions being asked. The media is going to go nuts. Uh, articles every day. It's going to be groundbreaking. And after about two weeks of what, um, you know, what the what the president's going to do about this, uh, you've got to go in and make an announcement and say, you know, look, I've talked to the Secretary of Defense. I've talked to key con congressional letters, and I've watched the testimony. It's pretty convincing. I think that we now can be assured that, in fact, there is a non-human in origin. And, you know, the president, whoever that is at the time, may say extraterrestrial presence, but it's non-human and it's not our tech. That's disclosure. That is the, uh, the aha eureka moment. That is disclosure. So it's similar to what we do, you know, when a president is inaugurated. The president is elected in November. The inauguration takes place in January. And so for many days, we spend a lot of money to build up this huge scaffolding and, uh, you know, go through all this. And so people can participate in the formal passing of power. The difference is that, unlike the presidential inauguration, this scaffolding of UFO hearings, disclosure, White House statements, the press, Senate Intelligence Committee, does not need to be taken down. The scaffolding that's in place now, officially, under whistleblower protection and under 
sworn testimonial will remain in place to deal with this post-disclosure world that happens the instant after this president, and it'll have to be the president that makes the confirmation. But I've also said a lot of disclosure will not come from necessarily from the government or media. It will come from crowdsourcing. So that is what I have for you today. Um, again, I'm going to leave you with this quote from David Darling, who's a PhD astronomer, and he said this, quote, mature civilizations in the galaxy would recognize the risks of first contact and avoid revealing too much about themselves until the time was right. Well, guess what, listeners? We're in our roaring 20s. The time is right. Disclosure is what I call the drip, drip, drip technique. I've been talking about it since 2018. Uh, check out the past shows to correlate with this show. And again, um, you know, we're not alone. We never were. It's just now a matter of being revealed in a public uh, way that we can all accept it. And just think of the benefits and how inspiring that's going to be for all of us. Think of Star Trek. Think of Star Wars. Think of that as a reality. So thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this show. Um, as I always say, wait, watch, and witness. And until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. And most importantly, wherever you're at in this world or the galaxy far, far away, dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live, and discover that diamond within. We'll see you next time here on Inspired Living. Take care.